Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, dear students. So welcome to another session of introduction to uh, data structures and uh, algorithms. So in a previous session, we discussed regarding implementation of uh, linked list and a few of the operations which uh, we perform on the linked list. So now uh, in today's session, uh, let us go ahead and uh, discuss uh, uh, what are the different types of linked list. So in different types of linked list, we have singly linked list, circular linked list and doubly linked list. So these are the uh, different types of linked list what we have. So singly linked list is nothing but uh, the previous discussions what we did regarding the uh, linked list right in the previous sessions that actually is a singly linked list. So what happens in uh, this case is so as we had uh, seen the logical representation of the uh, linked list in the previous session. So uh, based on that we can just try to identify why it is termed as singly linked list. Now here we can observe that we have say N1 is node 1, N2 is node 2 and so on it continues. So if there are n number of nodes in this case, so each node will be having two fields. One is the info field which contains the data element and one is the next field which helps us to establish the logical connection between the two nodes. Now here if you just observe if I have to uh, connect N1 to N2 what I do is I update the next field of N1 that is node 1 to point to the address of node 2. So in this way what I am doing is I am establishing a logical connection between the two nodes. So similarly if N2 has to be connected to its next node say N3 then what we do is in the next field of this node that is node 2 I uh, I uh, update it with the address of the node 3. So in this way, if we just observe uh, what happens is I, if I start from the first node, I can traverse and continue and reach up to the last element with the help of the next field of each node. Now, if you make an observation over here, what is happening is say I'll just consider N1 and N2 over here. What is happening is N1 is connected to N2 via the next field of N1 that is node 1 is connected to node 2 with the help of the next field of node 1. Now here you have established the logical connection. Now when you have connection in this form what we specify is we can specify we can observe that N1 is the predecessor and this one is followed by N2 that is node 2 which acts as a successor for N1. So node 1 is predecessor and node 2 is successor. That is when I consider the relation between node 1 and node 2. Now here you if you just observe another parameter what is happening is node 1 if I uh, get access to node 1 right I can know who is the successor that is node 2. It is because of this field because of this next field which is storing the address of next node. But suppose by chance if I get to know that uh, uh, that node 2 I get access to node 2. Can I get to know that who is the predecessor for this? So I cannot get to know that because node 2 is not storing any address which is related to node 2. So I don't have any field which helps me to store the information of the predecessor that is who is the predecessor. So which is nothing but the address of the node 1 in this case what we are discussing. So here we can observe that the connection what is established that is the logical connection between each of the nodes which are present in the linked list. It happens only in one direction. It happens only in one direction. So if I have to specify it in a simple way it will be from its predecessor to successor. So if there is another element this will be acting as a predecessor for the next element. So in this way predecessor to successor I can uh, I can uh, see I can have the connection but if I have the successor I cannot know who is the predecessor over here. So that this is the case what we look out for. So here since the connection is only in one direction that is logical connection is established only in one direction. If you know the predecessor I'll I can get to know who is the successor. So if this is the case, this falls under singly linked list. So that is uh, what we have observed in the previous session. So linked list discussions what we have. It is the same this thing. 
So that kind of establishment is termed as singly linked list. Now uh, let us look at what is meant by circular linked list. So before going into that, a few more uh, discussions from the singly linked list and then we'll come to the circular linked list. So here we had used the special point pointer which was termed as first. So which helped us to identify the first node in the linked list. And we had another special pointer last which helps us to identify which is the last node in the linked list. Now uh, there was another case what we had observed if this is the last node, what should be present in the next field of the last node? So in this case, that is uh, the uh, logical uh, representation what we had. We saw that if the last node is present, its next field will be pointing to a null pointer. So it will be pointing to a null pointer. So in between, if I check, none of these next fields will be null. Only the next field of the last element or the last node will be containing null. So there are two ways of identifying who is the uh, who, which is the last element in this case. That is either we we can use uh, the uh, last special pointer or we use the uh, address which is associated with this and the next field of that address. So based on that, I'll get to know whether the element which is there is last or not. Now here you can see that in the last part, what we are doing is we are storing a null pointer over here. We are storing a null pointer in the last element. In circular linked list, just one minor change you have to do. So to make this list itself as a circular linked list, what I do is instead of storing a null in the last node, what I do is I store the address of the first element or the first node. So that is what I do. Or that is the minor change what I have to do in order to make the linked list a circular linked list. So here we can observe the same thing. So if I just observe from here to here, it is all same. Only minor change is what? Minor change is the next field of the last node will be containing the address of the first node of the linked list. So if I do this, I obtain the circular linked list. So now if I uh, just make the observations over here, if I have to check which is the last element in the circular linked list. So what I have to do is I have to check out for this parameter that is the last pointer. So I'll get to know that what is the address of the last node which is present in the circular link list. So apart from that, you can use the other logic. That is, if you get the address of this node, point it, check out what is the next field containing in that. So if it is equal to the first node, that is the address of the first node, then also I get the logical aspect that this is the last element. So if you just observe, uh, uh, the uh, programming or the algorithm algorithm point of view, right? Only minor changes. You have to keep track of this. You have to update this and uh, rest all say insertion, deletion, search operation. So all these things uh, can be uh, can be same as that what we had discussed for the previous linked list. That is the singly linked list. So with slight changes in the logic, you can implement the circular linked list. So now let us look at the other parameter that is the doubly linked list. So what is happening in doubly linked list? So now we discussed one problem over here. That is if uh, node one is there and if it is a predecessor, I can get access to its successor who is, who is node two, who is node two. So now if I, if I get access to successor, I cannot check who is the predecessor. That is, there is no logical connection. <laughs> so 
so here we observed a problem that in no if i have access to node 1 that is uh, which is acting as a predecessor i can know who is the successor say that is the node 2 uh, but uh, if i have access to node 2 i cannot know who is the predecessor for this node 2 because there is no logical connection from the previous uh, from uh, the present node to the previous node so i don't have a logical connection in the other direction now what i do is if i establish that point that is if i can traverse from predecessor to successor and if i get access to the successor if i can traverse back to the predecessor so then what this does is this gives rise to the doubly linked list so here that is the aspect what you can look out for so here if i just observe what we have is so this is say node 1 this is node 2 now again we have two fields which are common as we discussed in the previous case so here we'll be having the info field which contains the data element and we have the next field which contains the address of the next node it contains the address of the next node <clears throat> so this part is common so only one new thing which comes into existence is since you should have the connection between the present and the previous node. So here you have from predecessor to successor, you have the connection. But if I want to have connection between the successor, that is from successor to the predecessor. So what I do is I have to add another field that is which is termed as the previous field. So what this does is this this field stores the address which points to its previous node which points to its previous node or what we specify is the successor makes use of the previous field in order to establish a logical connection with its predecessor so if we establish uh, say uh, the linked list in this form we obtain what is called as doubly linked list and uh, here we can observe in this part that the next field of the last node is stored with null it is stored with null so these are the three different types of linked lists what we can observe so now uh, let us uh, look into uh, what are the implementation aspects and what are the operations which we can consider so here again implementation wise uh, if we uh, consider the uh, circular linked list singly linked list is already discussed so the previous uh, sessions what we discussed just regarding the linked list that is actually the singly linked list so next point which comes is the circular linked list so in circular linked list we have two things first we have to declare the uh, node and then we have to define what all operations you will be performing so this overall will be helping us to implement the circular linked list now what are the operations we have to look out for which can which we can perform on the circular link list so these are nothing but again the same operations what we had discussed so we we, uh, we might be uh, looking for inserting an element into the link list deleting an element from the link list or searching for a specific element within the link list uh, so in terms of circular link list we are talking and if you want to print all the elements which are present in the circular link list so these are a few of the operations what we can look out for which helps us in overall implementation of the circular linked list. So now uh, here, uh, if I just observe, only few minor changes will come into existence. So remaining all logic will be same. So if I uh, consider, say, the insertion of an element, element into the linked list. So first, what is the first thing we have to do? We have to have a memory allocated to the element what you are inserting. So here it is identified by the value. So I have to get access to the uh, address and in that address I store the value. In that address I store the values that is in the info field. I store the value. Now what I should do is the logical aspects what we discussed in the previous session. We have to check whether the list is empty or not so that is what you are checking over here 
So first, first thing is check whether the list is empty or not. If it is empty, then what happens is the value what you are inserting or the element what you are inserting becomes the first element of the circular linked list. So if this is the first element of the circular linked list, then what we have to do is. So if you just observe over here, so if this is the first element what you are inserting at the initial stage, what you did, you had initialized last and first special pointer to null in the C programming if you just observe. So we initialize these to null indicating that the uh, link, uh, the circular link list is empty. So now if this is the first element which we are inserting, then what I have to do is I have to update this first special pointer and this uh, last special pointer to address to the new node what you have introduced. So this is the first case. Check whether the list is empty. If not, then the new element what you are adding becomes the first element of the circular linked list. So based on that, we need to update the first special pointer, last special pointer and the next field of the present node. So here, uh, if this is the first node, this will be updated with what? It will be updated with the null value. So that is what you are doing over here. You are checking whether the list is empty and you are updating that information. Now suppose if there is at least one element in the linked list, so which indicates that the uh, list is not empty. So I have got a new node, say N2 is the new node which I have to introduce and I get to know that there is one node which is already present. So therefore the list is not empty. List is not empty. So what I do is I add the element at the end of the circular linked list. So here what I do is. I uh, keep on uh, uh, updating the field. So here uh, if you just uh, observe uh, that is if this condition fails off, then I consider the next field of the element and update it with the first special pointer address. That is uh, the address which is present in the first special pointer and then I go to step eight. So what I am uh, doing is I'm stopping at this condition. So you are creating what you are inserting the element at the end. You are inserting the element at the end. And uh, apart from that, what you are doing is. Uh, sorry, uh, I just missed out one other thing. So if this condition is true, what you are doing is uh, uh, you are updating the first and the last pointer to this and you are updating the next field. Sorry, uh, you should not uh, update it with null. I, uh, I missed out. So uh, since there is only one element, what we have to do is we have to give a link to itself. So which will help us to maintain the circular link list aspect. So uh, please rectify that. Uh, I just missed out. I specified that you should update it with null. So you should not update it with null. You should update it with the first pointer information. That is address of the first pointer. So since this is the only node in the first case what we had considered, this is the only node which you are adding over there. So in that case, the next field has to be updated with the first point. So that is uh, what you have to look out for. And uh, once you do that, you stop the process. But if this fails, but if this fails, then what I should do, I should update the last node. That is here if you just observe, Say after this, I have to update the node. So this next field which is there, right? It will be updated with the address which is present in the pointer. So in this way, you have established the logical connection between the new node. So now again, you have values already stored in this field. Now in this field, we have to update the address. So in this case, since we have to maintain the circular uh, linked list aspect, what we have to do is we have to update this address with the pointer with the address which is present in the first pointer. So that is what you are doing over here. So last nodes next field is updated with the pointer value. So what this is doing is this is helping you to insert the element. That is the value at the end of the circular link list. Once you do this, so this is the new nodes address. So its next field has to be updated with the first uh, special pointer information. So which will establish the circular path. And since 
the value what you are inserting is the last element you should update the last pointer equal to ptr so this is what you are doing in insertion so if you just observe minor changes you keep the circular link list that is you maintain this connection so this is the minor change so here what you are doing if you are inserting at the end you updated it with the null but in circular what you have to do is if it is the last node what you are inserting this field has to point to the first node of the link list so that is the minor change what you have to look out for so now uh, if i have to delete a element so what we had done so for deleting deleting a element we have to first identify the location of the value first we need to identify whether that value is present in the link list circular link list and then we need to identify what is the address of that value or the element and then we delete it so deletion again uh, it will be almost same as uh, what we had uh, done for the singly link list but just we should take care that uh, if you are deleting this element you have to update the next field in a proper form so that is what you have to look out for so here uh, what we are doing is we are first trying to search the value so we are trying to see whether the value is present in the uh, present in the uh, circular link list if it is present then we perform the deletion operation so here uh, we had seen in the c program right uh, what they had specified if the location returned is null so it indicates that uh, we cannot delete the element since element is not present in that present in the circular link list so if loc that is a returned value that is the location of the element what you want to delete is returned as a null that indicates that there is no element which is present therefore delete operation was unsuccessful and you stop the process now uh, if uh, if this condition fails then what it indicates it indicates that uh, you have identified the location of the element what you have to delete so what you do first check you check out whether the element which has to be deleted is the first element or not so now here uh, if you just observe so the first check is you are checking whether the element that has to be deleted is the first element or not if it is the first element that has to be deleted so if you observe this first pointers information should be updated such that the next node becomes the first node of the circular link list because after deleting this next node becomes the first element of the entire list a circular link list so this is what we have to look out for then apart from that if i am pointing to this new node that is if i am pointing to the next node after the deletion i should update last nodes next field i should update last nodes next field to point to the new address to the point to the new address because once you update this information this will still be pointing to the previous location it will be still be pointing to the address of the previous node so but this has to be deleted so therefore we have to update the next field of the last node to point to the new first node that is this case so that is what you have to look out for when you are dealing with circular link list so that is that is the first case so if you have identified the location you check out whether it is the first element then you go to step 6 and uh, if this fails you have to go to step 11 so from st st step uh, 6 if you uh, just observe what you are doing is uh, apart from this what you are checking is you are also checking whether there is only one element present or not so first check what you did you checked whether it is the first element what you have to delete so if uh, if you have more number of nodes then the operation what i specified you have to perform but if there is only one node then what will happen first and last will be same if there is only one node present in the linked list then first and last element will be same so if that is the case then what i have to do is i have to initialize these two pointers to null because if there is one node and you delete this then the list becomes empty how do i identify the list is empty i make the first is equal to null and the last special pointer is equal to null so that is what i have to look forward 
so if there is only one element present in the linked list then what i do is first equal to last equal to null so i update the first and the last special pointer to null and go to step 8 wherein i specify that delete was successful and we stop the process now uh, if there is more than one element if this condition fails if there is more than one element then what i do is i ch uh, check out uh, that is i go to step 8 so in step 8 what we are doing is we try to reset the first pointer we try to reset the first pointer so what is this doing this is pointing to the that, that is this is making the next node as the first node of the circular linked list so if first field is updated with first that is next uh, this thing so here if this is the first uh, node and when you consider this one and this address is updated over here what this does is this helps the po first pointer to point to the next node which is available after the first node so that is what you are performing over here and uh, last nodes uh, next field you are updating it with the updated information of the first special pointer so in this way you are maintaining the connection so now uh, here if you uh, just observe if uh, this step fails you are going to uh, sorry uh, if this step is uh, sorry once you have done this you continue so uh, since you have deleted the uh, uh, deleted the element by uh, do, performing these steps right you mention that deletion was successful and stop the process you stop the process so this is what you have to look out for when you are deleting an element from the linked list now apart from this so this part was with respect to with respect to uh, the first node what you are deleting but the if, if the element uh, if the address of the node which is present that is the node what you have to delete it is somewhere in between it is somewhere in between so then what i have to do is if you just look at the logical aspect if it is somewhere in between then what i do is if i have to delete this then i have to update the next field of its a pre, uh, next field of its previous node so that it points to the next node which is following the node which has to be deleted suppose if i just specify n1 n2 and n3 so n2 has to be deleted so n1 has to point to n3 so how it points to n3 it makes use of the next field of the node which has to be deleted and it updates it in the next field of node 1 so once this is done there will be a logical connection between node 1 and node 3 and this will be deleted out so this is what you do if the element is present in between so that is what you are doing over here so now apart from this apart from this you also need to check out another condition that if this is the last node what you are deleting that is the last node which you are deleting so in this you should be little bit careful so what you have to do is you have to keep track of its predecessor if this is the element or the node which you have to delete you have to keep track of its predecessor and update the last pointer so that it points to the predecessor and predecessor's next field has to point to the first node that is the uh, it has to point to the first node so this will this these are the operations what we have to look out for when we are performing delete operation in the circular linked list so that is what is being checked over here so you have updated temp next is equal to that is you have stored temp loc minus 1 so what is this doing is this is actually accessing the previous nodes information so it is like you are storing the predecessor information over here so if you are successful so it will stop over here but if the node is somewhere in between if the node is somewhere in between and if you have to cross verify whether it is the last element also so for that purpose what you do is you keep track of this part and then you perform this operation Uh, so once you do this you have to update the relevant fields that is the first field and the last sorry uh, the first uh, special pointers information and last special pointers 
information. So this is what you have to look out for when you are dealing with circular linked list for deletion operation that has to be performed. So this is the C program what you can observe. So if you just uh, see uh, it is almost same. So here you can see uh, the declaration of the uh, structure. So here this is the circular uh, linked list uh, node what they have specified which contains two field info and the next field. So next field contains the address of the type struct node that is here it is CL underscore node to identify that it is circular linked list. So initially the first and the last special pointers are initialized to null and these are the operations what you will be looking out for for performing on the circular linked list. So remaining uh, almost all the things will be same only one minor change what you have to look out is you try to maintain the circular connection between the last element and the first element. So that is the minor change what you have to look out for. So previous programs what we have discussed there uh, we have to rectify only those statements. So I'll not be discussing uh, these things as already the logic remains same. So already we have we have discussed it for singly linked list minor change last elements this thing has to be updated and few other logical aspects. So now uh, let us look into doubly linked list. So here uh, we can uh, see that uh, in doubly linked list what has to be done. Uh, we have to establish connection between the predecessor and the successor and we should also have a connection from successor to predecessor that is in the other direction. So that there, there, there will be connection in, uh, the, in both the directions. So this will be done with one additional pointer which is named as a previous pointer which points to the previous node or its predecessor. So that is what uh, we have to look out for. So when we are declaring the uh, node which is associated with the doubly linked list, two things remain common that is the info field and the next field remain common as we have seen in the singly linked list and the circular linked list. One additional thing which comes over here is the previous field which helps us to uh, build the logical connection between the present node and its previous node. So that is uh, what we can observe over here and what are the operations which we can look out in the doubly linked list? It is the insert, delete, search and print operations. So these are the operations what we have to look out for. Uh, so here uh, again uh, when we are inserting and deleting the elements, right? Uh, so what all things have to be updated? So instead of discussing the, uh, uh, the algorithm, I'll uh, explain the algorithm with the help of this diagram itself. So here what we are doing uh, in this case, so again uh, we have to uh, check out the uh, conditions what we had seen even in the previous cases. That is the circular linked list and singly linked list. Uh, so here initially first and the last pointer will be null when the list is empty. Suppose I want to insert an element. So if I have to insert an element, the first check what I have to do is I have to check whether the list is empty whether the list is empty. If it is empty, if it is empty, then what I do is uh, I update the node with its relevant information. So if I just observe over here what they have specified, you first get access to the address, you store the value in that address and you cross verify whether the list is empty based on this condition. If the list is empty, you set the first pointer and the last special pointer to the address of the new node what you are inserting and apart from that what you do is you uh, use the ptr next field to point to ptr previous ptr previous and it is it, it, both are initialized to null values so here what you are doing is since if this is the first element so this will be updated with the null value and previous element also will be updated with the null value. So since there is only one node which is present, say if you are inserting the first element into the linked list. So that is what you do. Now, uh, now suppose there is already one node which is present. 
and this is the node what you want to insert. So first get access to a address. You allocate an address and store the value in that address. And what you do is what you do is you update this previous field to point to its predecessor or the previous node. That is you update the previous fields of node to to point to the previous node address of the previous node that is node one and uh, next field will be helping us to maintain the logical connection between the next node. So node two to say if I say node three. So what I have to do is in the next field I have to update the address of node three so that it points to node three. Uh, there is a next node. So when I'm doing this again, what I have to do is I have to make an interconnection between node three and node two. So here we have to update uh, that is in previous case you, you are updating only these parameters. So you are updating these uh, these parameters. So this remains same. Now what we have to do is we have to update one extra thing that is this previous field. We have to update the previous field. That is uh, what you have to look out for. So now uh, here if uh, the list is not empty, then what we have to do is we have to check out what is the uh, uh, step seven. So in this case, what we are doing is we are accessing the last nodes next field and updating it with the pointer. So what we are doing is we are inserting the element at the end of the uh, W linked list. And uh, with this, what we are doing is PTR previous is updated with the last pointer because still I haven't updated the last pointer. So it is containing the previous nodes information. So here I am maintaining the reverse condition. So if I have node two and node three. So if node two was the last element, what I did was uh, the PTR next field is updated with the PTR value. Uh, so that is uh, these uh, sorry, uh, the last nodes. That is this is the last nodes. Last nodes next field is updated with PTR value that is the node three value node three address. It is updated with the node three address and uh, what we are doing is since this is not yet updated node three's previous field node three's previous field is updated with the address which is containing in the last pointer. So in this way what you are doing is you are establishing a connection between node three and node two that is from successor to predecessor, you have established the connection. And by doing this step, what you're doing is from previous to, uh, sorry, uh, from predecessor to successor, you have maintained the, uh, maintain the connection. Now what we have to do is this field's next value, which is there, it has to be updated with null. So that is what you are performing over here. And uh, since this is the last node in the present W link list, I have to update the last pointer so that it points to the last node. That is what is done over here. So this is the insertion operation which is performed in the W link list. And when you want to delete the element from the W link list, so again, uh, what you do is you check out whether the element is present or not. If the element is present, you delete delete that element from the uh, W link list and update the relevant information. So that is what you are performing over here. So you are identifying the address of the uh, value or the element what you want to delete. You are checking whether the element is present or not. If it is not present, then the delete, delete operation was unsuccessful. But if it is uh, if this condition fails, then it indicates that you have got the address of the address of the element which has to be deleted. So again, in this steps, you perform the same operations with minor changes. So the minor change is associated with the previous field. It is associated with the previous field. So we have to update those information. The logical aspect again remains the same. Only updation which comes is the updation of the previous field. So remaining uh, in previous session, we had discussed regarding how, how we update the next field of any given node. So we checked out whether the list, whether the element is present or not. If the element is present, we identified the location. 
uh, once we identify the location, we try to check out whether it is the first element or not. If it is the first element, what is the steps we have to perform to delete the operation? But if it is not the first element, but it is some other element, what are the steps we have to perform? So these are the things what we have to look out for. And apart from that, if the element that has to be deleted is the last element. So these are the conditions what we have to look out when we are deleting the elements from the doubly linked list. So the, uh, these are the algorithms uh, what we can look out for uh, the operations. And again, uh, if you just uh, look at uh, the declaration which is associated with the uh, doubly linked list. So you have info next and one additional is the previous. So initially the first and the last point is initialized to null indicating that the list is empty at the starting process and these are the operations what you are looking out for. So here uh, the rest all things remains uh, remains the same. Only a slight changes which come in is with these aspects. So that is what we have uh, discussed in the algorithms. So this is uh, all for today. Uh, let us meet in the next session uh, which, in which we'll be uh, continuing with the uh, next part. OK, I think we'll be going ahead with the uh, queues. So that is what we'll be discussing. So this uh, ends up the uh, discussion pertaining to the linked list. <clears throat> so let us meet in the next session. Thank you. <clears throat>